we're going to draw some trilobite fossils, although these could be pictures of real trilobites also. Trilobite fossils tend to be really, really good, highly detailed, pretty much like looking at the real thing. So you can imagine these are fossils or the real thing, either way. Let me show you first. This is kind of where we're going with it. We're going to do a tone drawing with some dark and some white to highlight. And then we're going to do a little scientific drawing down here. So you will need a white pencil, a black pencil, and something that's a little bit darker than the paper you're drawing with. Now, I've got kind of a yellowish tan paper here. You can use kind of a gray or a blue. Here's how one looks on a little slightly a little lighter shade, kind of a tan. doesn't matter what you use, but if you're using a blue paper, then pick kind of like a gray or blue. If you're using something in shades of tan, pick a brown. If you're working on gray paper, pick a kind of a dark gray. So basically you need a darker shade of whatever kind of paper you're working on. And then also, if you'd like to use a regular pencil to sketch things out, you can. All right, so let's zoom in on this first section here. Now you can see that I put the scientific name down there, the genus and species. It's always in italics, and the genus is always capitalized. That's just how it's done. So this one is looks unpronounceable. It's Ellipsocephalus hophi. So ellipso, an ellipse is like an oval, and cephalus means head. And hophi, I'm guessing, is named after the person that first discovered it. Usually the discoverer gets their last name in there somewhere. Okay, so you'll see that there are some little dots. Now, I'm working on speckled paper, so it's a little bit hard to see which of these little dots are my dots. But the dots should be kind of right down like this, dot, 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 down here. There's these two little things down below. Little things here, a couple dot here and here to help guide you. So let's just start with going like this. Find these little notches up here, like that, and the other notch connects down like that. I might just use my brown here. And then over like this, there's the little dot in the middle there. And then over the top, it kind of looks like it's going to go over. And it does. Just kind of incorporate those little marks into your drawing. And then down here, make it a little bit kind of bowed downwards like that. So what we've drawn So what we've drawn is called the cephalon and cephalon or cephalus means head. So it's basically the head area. And then let's sketch out the body down here, the thorax. You see the Little dots there, just kind of follow them along until they end up like that. The little thing at the bottom, and then over here, the same. And then here, you make kind of a little U shape like that. Now up here, round these off a little bit. This part in the middle is called the glabella. And then bring the line straight down like this. And like this. Now, the first thing we're going to do is shade it in general, put the overall kind of shading in, and then we're going to add the little detailed lines after that. That's a very good 
way to start drawings usually is just do your shading so that the thing looks three-dimensional and then add the details. So we're going to make it look like the light is coming from the left. So the shadows are going to be on the right. Now when you shade you need to be very gradual. You start out here pretty dark and then go a little lighter, lighter and lighter and lighter and try to have it not look like a stripe. You see how you really can't tell where the shading begins or ends? If your shading looks like this, it looks too much like a stripe. Okay, make it really gradual so you just so gradually fade off. Now this paper, you can see there's like a little streak down there, it's going to bother me. This is highly textured paper, it's very good for like fancy art projects. But it's a little bit annoying when you're doing a drawing there. Okay, so assume that before you've done this drawing you've looked at a few pictures of trilobites so you kind of understand how the basic body shape is supposed to go. This middle part is called the axial part. Axial axis usually means central. Shade the side of the glabella a little bit. Now if the if the light is coming from over here, if this is like kind of a little bump, you probably are going to have a little shadow in here too. The shadow created by by that. So I may need to slightly darken this line a little bit. We can go and add some black afterwards too. So not too worried about it. Okay, and then a little bit on here, although don't. Don't make this quite as intense as the other one because just the shape of the trilobite, it's, it's, it's kind of just not super round right there. So don't overly do it. And maybe just a tiny bit right here. Just a little bit like that. Okay, now a tiny bit here, tiny bit here. Okay, so already you can kind of feel that 3D-ness of it. You can sense the overall round shape. Now we can put in the rings. These are called axial rings. And we're not going to worry about the exact number here. There's so many different species of trilobites, probably. I don't have, well, maybe I'll have the same, but I bet there's different numbers. So make them a little bit rounded, kind of the same shape as this right here. Just make that shape again, again. And then as we get toward the bottom, we're going to make them a little bit closer. If you just want to press hard and just make it in one, one stroke, that's fine. There we go. And then make them smaller and smaller and smaller. There. Now this side also has them. They're called something different over here. They're not called axial rings. Although they look a lot the same. I'm trying to make it so it's a continuation, right? So we have the same number of segments over here. If yours doesn't, that's okay, but I think they match up. Real trilobites. There. And then over here. Come from the top.
now let's take the white. We're going to put in some highlights right here. Right in this section, though there's no shading, we don't want to color it all white. That's a mistake some people make when they do this kind of drawing. You, they cover up the paper. They end up covering over the entire section with either brown or white or black. So you really don't want to do that. You want to leave that paper showing through because that's, that's kind of one of your colors. We're really working with four colors here, white, brown, black, and the color of the paper. And that's, that's good. The paper is kind of your light, light color, your, um, not as light as the white, but kind of your lightest natural color. So this is going to be just a highlight. Right where the light is really hitting it, making it shine, this will make it look kind of shiny, really. You just want to make a little, like this, kind of keep them lined up. I guess you could, you could um, just make a stripe, but I think it looks better if you do each section separately and don't go over that brown line. I think it'll look nicer in the end. It'll be worth the trouble. And then a little bit on here. See how I'm putting it off center? Because I think if you put it over into the center, it's maybe going to look a little bit too round. Although it's okay if you want to, if yours is in the center, it's okay. It'll be, it'll be just a round trilobite. That's fine. And I'm going to put a little over here. The highlight always just makes it really pop. As soon as you put that on, you're like, wow, looks 3D. On one of my preliminaries, I put a little highlight, and the other I didn't. And I almost like the one where I didn't. I'll show you. There's the one where I didn't put the highlight. And there's the one where I did. And you can do it either way. You take your pick. I'm definitely going to put a little bit up here, start really gentle, rub really soft, and then gradually make it a little bit darker because you don't want a big stripe. There we go. And then I like to just follow up. And the places are going to be absolutely the darkest, just on the edge here, on the edge here, take my black and just do a tiny, tiny bit, go in here, and just punch a little bit of dark, just like that. And then you can sort of go back in with brown anywhere you want to. If you want to add a little bit more, if you think the shadow's not quite strong enough, you can go back in. Now this guy doesn't have eyes, at least not that you can see. Maybe there were eyes in the original creature. I mean, we just have fossils of things, so maybe there were eyes over here underneath or something. But as far as we know, 
Uh, this guy doesn't have eyes. Which is strange because trilobites are really known for their eyes and they have some of the most amazing eyes in the animal kingdom. So let's go down here and do this guy next. The Ania Superba. That's a much easier name. And this is going to be kind of a very short one. It looks more like a mask. I assume the eyes would be under these bulges here, kind of like a horseshoe crabs. But so let's find the dots. This part is actually going to be the bottom of a uh, the globella. We'll get to that in a second. Find the dot that's right next to it. Go to the left. There's a dot here. And let's trace, find one that's over here and over here. And then there's one down here. Now you don't have to make this thing come to a point just because there's one dot down there. and kind of make it rounded at the bottom. But that's basically where that's going to go. And then over here there's a dot. And then there's a couple... Make a curve like that, and then same thing down here. And then let's go around the top. There's some dots that kind of curve over the top like this, and then it's going to come down and make that really skinny spine there. Kind of like doing a dot to dot, but there's not very many dots, so kind of on your own a little bit. Come down to here. And that's the cephalon. And then here, there's a dot, see down here? That's, imagine that's a point of like a heart shape. You want to make a Imagine that you, you know, don't draw the heart all the way in, but this, this side of a heart sort of comes to this little point, just a little bit, not too much. Trying to make it match the other side's a bit tricky. So you might want to do this in pencil there. Then this thing makes that little center labella. It's kind of like um, a little bit like an oval, but kind of like a flattened. Reminds me of some kind of a squash seed or something without a point. And then here we're going to make shape that's. It kind of fits right in there, a little, sort of like a very rounded triangle, sort of. Just snuggles right in there. I'm assuming this is where the eyes would have been. This would have been just some kind of a little raised bump, very much like a horseshoe crab, where the actual eyeball will be underneath here. So maybe like a covering over it. Now, trilobites have compound eyes, just like insects. They have those little tiny individual lenses, like hundreds of little lenses, just like a bee or an ant or a dragonfly. And we know that because we have perfectly preserved fossils where you can see those little lenses. Okay, so um, let's, I'm going to switch to my brown here. And I'm going to start actually with this thing, making it look just a little round, shade, just the right side. We'll pretend that the light's coming from the left, same as the other one. We'll imagine that. And then right side of here, and the right side of here. And then since this is kind of sticking up, there's going to be a little bit of a shadow in here. Somewhat shady in here, like that. And over here. 
And I'm going to darken this a little bit as we go down. Here. If you want to go around the top of the brown a little bit, do that. Kind of solidify the line a bit. Okay, now in here, there's kind of like a bump, sort of like we had up here, the equivalent of this thing, but it's really going to be short, just like this. So I want to kind of shade a little on the side, make it look like there's bump going up. I'm just gonna make that whole side just a tiny bit darker, like that. And I'm gonna take my black. And we're going to have kind of the equivalent of those rings. I put them right here. And then it's just going to kind of go off like that. Like that. Another one. This is such a strange shaped creature. You can't imagine this is it's actually a living creature. Like I said, it looks like some kind of like a African dance mask or something. It's so odd. And so all its uh, legs would be underneath. We're drawing the top side, We're drawing its back. Of course, it would run around on the ocean floor so that we're looking down on it here so we don't see the legs. This kind of looks a little blank over here. I think I'll try to just a tiny bit. Like I said, you don't want to completely cover up the paper. That's what's nice about working on tone paper. You want to see the paper through it. And then we're going to do some work with the white. And this one's going to have not only just a little tiny, just a tiniest bit here because this is actually fairly flat. It's not really very bumpy. In the photograph that I'm working from, it looks a little bit on the flat side, so I don't want to do that too much. You can a little bit here. Again, it's pretty flat, just a tiny bit. But then what it has is these little dots. You take that white and go in hard as you can, make little tiny texture dots. Some trilobites were, had little bumps, goose bumps all over them. And I don't know if anybody knows exactly what they were. I guess part of just the texture of its skin or shell. Now we can really make these pop if you take your black 
make sure it's sharp. Here's a little trick. If you want to make sure your pencil is sharp and you don't want to put it in the pencil sharpener, you just go like this. You just roll it a couple times. Make sure it's up at an angle. Just roll it until it looks sharp. Because every time you sharpen your pencil in the sharpener, it gets a lot shorter. So if you want to make just a little sharp tip and not have to waste a lot of pencil, that's how you do it. And then you can go like this. Make a, like a backward C shape. Go around just one side of those white things. Make like a backward C. Don't circle the whole thing, just make a C. You see how it kind of makes it look like it's like a shadow. It makes it look like the bumps are actually sticking up. So there's the finished trilobite, and in case you think this looks really too weird to be anything realistic, here it is, and that's exactly what it looks like. So now let's go up here, and you have to ignore this. My camera shut off a few minutes ago, and I had to start over and erase, and the colored pencil wouldn't erase very well. So just pretend that's not there. And let's set this back out just a little bit. What you want to look for on this one is the dots going around the top, making an arc like this. When you're sketching it in first time, just make very light lines in case you have to erase. And then you want to look for a dot in here and up here. So kind of go like this. Same thing over here, like this. Kind of go up and over, like a slight little S shape. And then you want to come down like this and meet that one. And that is the cephalon or head area. These are called the genal spines, and I don't know if they even really know what they did. Just look fancy, I guess. But some of them have spines and some of them don't. Okay, so this thing in here, as you can see where I was drawing, first draw a little uh, arch up here as if you're going to draw a circle, except make the bottom of the circle kind of flat like that. That's the gabella. And then you see this little U down here, that's where you're headed. Like that. Like that. That'll be the axial thing. And we're going to kind of do this shading first. We're going to come back and pick up all these uh, these spines in a minute. Once again, we're going to imagine that the light's coming from the left. We're going to shade the right. And then we need to make those axial rings. Now when we get to the bottom of this one, we're going to leave a little section at the bottom. Now, theoretically, all trilobites have this thing, but this is the only one 
on this page where you can see it. It's called the pygidium. So this thing is separate from this. This is actually the thorax. This is the cephalon. This thing is the thorax. And this is the pygidium. So we'll have a separate pygidium in this one. Now again, we'll make these kind of look like rings here. Shade them a little bit. And then I'm going to put the highlight here. And then just a little bit here. I'll come back and do the black later. Right now, let's let's put in the eyes first. Right here and here, it's going to have two kind of banana-shaped things. Now it's kind of funny that we're on our third trial bite, and only now we're drawing proper eyes because trilobates are known for their eyes. They have compound eyes, right, like insects. They probably had extremely good vision and they're really crazy looking eyes too. Now this one, you're seeing the top, so actually the eye would be like this. It kind of looked like a folded piece sitting here and we're just seeing this top, right? So this would have tons of little round lenses and be like that. So we're only seeing the top view. Let's go ahead and make these. The light's coming from the left side, so let's put a little highlight here and here. I'm going to make a little shadow here because they're kind of sticking up, so shadow on this side. And actually, I think I'll put a little bit of shadow here because this big axial thing is going to cast a shadow also a little bit. If you really want to make it pop, you can take your black and just do a little right there, a little right there. Actually, this, I don't like this dark line, the pencil I outlined in, I don't really like that. I'd like to have it just be light over here if I could, just a nice little white highlight. And then, that's better. So this guy also has those white dots. I don't know what color the dots were. I don't think I think they're just like a texture thing. I don't think they're actually any color on the original trilobites. Actually, I think I'm going to make a little white rim around here. I might lighten this again. I don't really like what the pencil is doing. I might erase a little bit of my original pencil. You don't have to. I want to make a highlight around here. Up and over. Sorry, I stopped in the middle of my dots. I 
and then this over here. But on this side, since the light is coming from the left, I want to make my highlight on the inside here. See how I just kind of erased that pencil there. There. And then conversely, then this side would be one right with the shadow. The right sides being in shadow and the left sides being highlighted. And then you can make the little white dot stand out. If you want to go back and put little black C's around them, you can. I think for the sake of time on this video, I'm just going to move on. You can also, if you want, you can darken a little around there, do something fancy. You can stand out a little more with the brown if you want. However, you can fuss with that all you want when you're done. I'm going to move on and let's do the, um, the spines here. Now the spines, just so you know where we're going with this, you will take your pencil and kind of cut really, really lightly. The spines are going to come like this and then kind of down like that. See, it's kind of like the, um, the outline over here. Right? So these things are actually going to turn into spines now. That thing is this. That thing is that. But these are actually going to look like legs. They're not legs. They're spines. But that's what they're going to look like. Let's see. So I'm going to take my brown and I'm going to make basically a spine, a curvy spine come out right at the bottom of one of these rings. Start right there. And curve out like that. Start right at the ring, curve down like that. Start there. And then when we get down here, they get really, just make a couple of lines, but it, um, when you get down the pygidium, this last one down here is going to kind of go in like this. And I'm just going to put an extra one in there too. Let's just pretend I got an extra one. I think I'll think I made enough down here. So I'm going to put in an extra one. There. So it kind of curves in round and then it gets more. My spines aren't very good. All right, now the challenge is to do that on the other side. To mimic, match, do the same thing. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be exactly the same thing, basically, as well as you can. See, I'm not going out quite to my guideline, but that's all right. Guideline is there for you to use or not use as you choose. Just a guide. There. And I'm going to add one at the top too coming out here. There's something in my photograph. There's something coming out the top there. So and then I want to go back in and 
make it look like an actual um, thick part right there. So whether you want to think of this as is this the bottom of a spine or the top, it doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent. If those are my bottom lines, then I'm going to go in and put tops like that. Draw a top line on all of these. And again, this is going to be sort of approximate. Ah, I'm already having trouble. Okay, so I'm just going to thicken. You just basically need to thicken the part that's sticking to the middle there. You want it to be thick. And then it gets thin and pointy towards the edge. And then I'm going to take my black and I'm just going to kind of highlight the bottom. Kind of gives it a little bit of dimensionality. And then while I'm in here, I'm going to do this too. Just walk up my black in there. Just kind of go over the ends of those. Now I'm just being picky. You don't have to do any of this or you can fuss as much or as little as you want later. Just make sure you keep the black real light. It's just a just a little, little highlight. It's not a not a black drawing. It's mainly brown. Okay, and then I'm going to erase my original guideline. I don't need that anymore. Just want to take that off. nice thing about using colored pencil is it really doesn't erase well. It's kind of bad if you want to erase it, but in something like this, the guideline picks up and the colored pencil stays right there. So the last thing we need to do is learn about the anatomy and if you have a pen that's got a really small point on it that's helpful you can use a pencil but the pen would be a little bit neater for this or also a very sharp pencil so we're going to look at the outside and then this is a cross section of the inside like if you if you cut the trilobite like this and then tipped it up and looked at the end that's what this is. Well, let's do this outside view first. And I've given you kind of just a very general 
shape. As you can see just from this page, trilobites come in many, many shapes. But there's certain similarities, and that is that they have ba three basic body parts. And the top part is called the cephalon, C-E-P-H-A-L-O-N. And that just means head. Cephalo is Greek for head. See, when you say it in Greek, it sounds fancy and scientific, but it just means head. And then this middle section here is called the thorax. And if you've studied insects, that's a familiar word. The thorax is the middle section on the insect. However, we have a different name here. It's not the abdomen. The insect has head, thorax, and abdomen. Here we have cephalon, thorax, and a really complicated word. P Y G. So that's pig. And then id, I D. And then I U M, pigidium. Now, if you want to add a couple of things, we can label a few more. If you're interested, there's this roundy head thing here they all have. They all have some kind of eyes. It could be round or whatever. We'll use the banana-shaped ones, but most of them had some kind of an eye. And then they have these kind of lines that go down here. And then they've got lines that go like this. So this thing is called the glabella. Glab, E-L-L-A, and these are the eyes. Some of them had antennae, not very many, but some of them did. If you want to add optional antennae, you can do that. I think I'll just leave them off mine. And let's label this. Some of them have this, some of them don't. But when they do have it, it's called the genal spine. G-E-N-A-L spine. And these things, if it has things sticking out, a lot of them have things like that. Those are just called spines. Some do and some don't. And then these things in the middle are called the axial rings. And if you really want to know what these things are, they have a different name. They're called the plural bands. If you don't care what they're called, you can just leave it unlabeled. But if you're interested, they're called plural. P-L-E-U-R-A-L -E bands. This isn't plural like more than one. This is plural as in connected to breathing. In the human body, things that begin with P-L-E-U-R are something having to do with the lungs. So I think that if you lifted these up, underneath these you would find the gills. And we'll see that that's probably the case down here when we do the cross section. Okay, so let's look at the cross section. Now if you have colored pencils and you want to go like this and a couple of these different colors, you can. It would be good to make that one red because that's, they think, where the heart was, or the heart tube. The closest thing it had to a heart. Now, of course, this is speculation because we don't have a living trilobite to look at. We've got sow bugs, little potato bugs. We've got horseshoe crabs and a few other really unusual, bizarre kind of sea creatures that look sort of like trilobites. So we can look at them and then 
assume that a trilobite might have been similar. So these things here would be, color them any color or whatever, these things, or you can leave them uncolored. Maybe you want to make them pink. Pink probably would have been better, because these are muscles. Lots of muscles connected to the legs. Now, in this cross section, they don't really look like they're connected to anything, which is really strange. But that's how cross sections are. Sometimes they just look strange. These are muscles. M-U-S-C-L-E-S. -E muscles. And then in the center, that little tube there, that would be the gut or the stomach. They don't have like a proper stomach like we do, but so maybe we'll just say this is the gut where the food goes. And then these feathery things down here would be the gills. And we're pretty sure they did have gills. So that's the way the similar animals are that we have today. They breathe with gills. So it's like a little G I L L S gills. And then this little dot here, see that little like double dot thing right there? That is supposed to be the nerve cord. Nerves, basically the, the same as our spinal cord. And then of course these are the legs. And you can color them or leave them, whichever. You notice they're segmented. So we're assuming that it's similar to like a horseshoe crab. So that's how you decided to make the legs horseshoe crabish, like any kind of crab. And then the top part there is the shell, you could call it a shell or carapace or what they call this. And I don't know what would be in here, the body cavity. So it'd be just like fluid or I don't know. Like So like I said, there's very few trilobites that have any of their inner mechanisms still left. There's a few that may have some legs sticking out, so we have a pretty good guess about what the leg looked like, but this is kind of all just speculation because we really don't know. So I'll just back out and let you see the whole page, and you can add any more little shading bits you want to.